Lounge in the Sun. All right, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan, and back with me again, one of my favorite cartoonists in the biz, Eric Larson. <laughs> you you know his work from all his Marvel stuff. Mo- mostly, what we're going to talk about today, though, is his image stuff. Savage Dragon. We're going to talk about the long history of that, the inception of Image, coming up all the way to celebrating the 30th anniversary. So, uh, welcome, Eric. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, um, you know, before we hit the record button, I just kind of wanted to, you know, brief, you know, re- recap of, you know, the inception of Image and, you know, maybe those f- those first plans of, you know, you, Rob and Jim Valentino, I believe were the first three that were going to break away and kind of do your own thing. And slowly the other guys kind of came into play. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a weird thing because it wasn't like, day day one it depends on where you where you're drawing the line really because uh me rob mostly wanted to, to test the waters to see if the audience who was reading whatever he was doing at marvel would follow him to something else mm-hmm. just to see like okay how would how would this work sort of thing he had taken an ad out in the comics buyer's guide at one point uh for some book that also had an x in it extremely so it so uh, in any case, we had gone out to dinner with Dave Ulrich, who uh, was kind of the main dude over at uh, Malibu Comics. And Rob had asked him, hey, would you publish a book by me? <laughs> and, and Dave was, uh, sure, I'd publish a book by you. I'd publish a book by any of you guys. So it was me and Valentino and Rob were with him at dinner that time. So that was just kind of the germ. And then they, uh, Rob took out an ad at some point for this executioner's thing. Executioner. And it was just like a lark to see what the reaction was going to be. I don't know if he, he'd drawn even page one. I, I knew he drew a, a, a picture. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then Marvel kind of lost their minds about it. They were like reading the riot act and they were going to do all sorts of stuff. And at that point, it was sort of, you know, don't do not do that. You know, guys, come on. It basically, it was, it was blood in the water at that point because it was like, we could see that you're scared shitless that this is going to happen. So that just kind of uh, incentivized and it kind of made him go, oh, yeah, yeah, this is the right thing to do because these people are really af- deathly afraid of what that might mean for them and to the industry at large. And you like, I mean, because you already had your self-published stuff. You did like the Megaton stuff with your yeah, 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 that right? was years back, ago, though. That back, was, that was right. 10 years before. So right, was, right. Was, but was, so it's like, but you already had been in the indie scene as opposed yeah, yeah, yeah. to like Liefeld hadn't really experienced it yet. So but like a little bit, he, Rob actually did a, a story in Megaton. So er, early on, he had done something too. He had kind of tested the waters a little bit. We all kind of did just breaking into the industry. That was kind of the, the, the way you work your way up the food chain was you'd start with these small independent com- comic book companies, do some work that nobody saw, but it, you know, it was experience and, and you got a little bit better every time you do something. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can build that and, and, turn into somebody that, that people want to pay some attention to. And so, but, so when Image was starting, right, yeah. like in the beginning, like Liefeld's Young Blood launched it, um, yeah. was the plan always to completely leave the big two? I know eventually you go back and do more work with Marvel and DC, but, and I, and I, you know, there was that rumored Lobo book that you were going to do at DC. Yeah, well, right in, initially it was really just, let's, let's see how this goes. Mm-hmm. We all started off with miniseries. We weren't sure what was going to go on. I think some of the guys were were thinking, oh, I can do this and my Marvel stuff. I don't think Valentino was ready to just completely uh, ditch what he was doing over there. He had plans on, on Guardians. I think Rob was kind of thinking, oh, maybe I could do layouts for Marad or something on X-Force and, and have that continue and i had other stuff that was kind of irons in the fire but until until savage dragon proved super commercially viable 
it, it just seemed like, all right, well, I'm, I've got this other stuff in case this doesn't work. Um, but I don't think we were all, we weren't like just going, screw you guys, we're out the door. Mm -hmm. um, that came later. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, initially it was like, you know, hey, let's, let's try this thing out and see if it works. Just trepidatiously putting our toe in the water just to see what this is, is like, you know. So when do you decide, like, what numbers come back to where you're like, I'm just going all dragon all the time? Um, I mean, I, I paid off my mortgage with the first check of my first issue. Insane. So no. it was like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's done i don't have to worry about this anymore and there were other issues so it was like oh and i'm doing more of these so this is going to work out okay and at, at a certain point it was like a it's work that i that i like to do more i don't have anybody saying you can't do this or this is not acceptable i could do whatever the hell i wanted to with characters that i created so i'm completely invested in it mm -hmm. And there is just, there is no downside of any kind other than I can't use, you know, Marvel or DC characters, but it's like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't need Marvel or DC characters anyway. I can make up character. Right. And you and already had, and you already <laughs> had like the wealth of characters that you kind of already had built out during your, your Megaton days too, which is. Yeah, well, to a degree. I mean, I had a, I had a, a number of, of superheroes that I created when I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. um, and I used a bunch of those characters when I was uh, doing stuff at Megaton. The, the, the bench was not very deep. I didn't have much in the way of decent villains. I would use the same crappy guys again and again and again when I was a little kid. So it's like, oh, Lex Luthor, he always fights the, you know, Superman every month. So I'll just, I'll just do something like that. <laughs> and so Dragon had his two or three guys and they're like, oh, the bronze man, I hate him so much. <laughs> so and there's a few and I carried over a few of those guys that I was able to use mm -hmm. years later, but most of them never even really became prominent bad guys in the book because it's like I had, I had other stuff that i can do so you in turn and then like you know fast forward like every everybody's books are successful you're seeing like the expansion of the, the lines of books mm -hmm. like the extreme stuff you did a couple spinoffs but not a tremendous right like what was the decision to kind of focus mo mostly on dragon i know you did bring in vanguard which was also you know back from the megaton days as well yeah it was just a certain amount of work that I could reasonably do, and I wanted to be able to have it all be decent. I think once you start expanding things out a huge amount, and you're not having people, you know, on the premises or, or whatever, it's it's hard to kind of maintain any kind of real quality control. So I did the best I could with with what was available. And also, you could just sort of see the writing on the wall with some of it. It's like, oh, okay, so things launch really big, and then you get to issue seven or eight, and suddenly it's like, well, this isn't this isn't slowing down. This this is keep going now. Mm -hmm. So eventually, it was like, I don't I don't know that I can depend on all these books being wildly successful forever. Right. So maybe just cool it a bit and not add a million things. Also, didn't really have a a, a House style, the way that um, some of the other guys did. You you look at, at at Wildstorm, and I think you can go. You know, all those books kind of have a look, and all of the uh, Extreme Studios books kind of have a look to them. And um, I was just getting guys whose whose art I liked, and there's a bunch of different guys, and they didn't draw any like me. So, right. If you were like, oh, I really love Savage Dragon, well. Well, maybe you'll like Freak Force. It's like, oh, I don't like that stuff at all. It's like, all right, well, I'm sorry. So if we're looking at the first five years of Image, you guys hit extremely high highs. But I think yeah. that, you know, like at the end of the five years is when I think the bubble pops 
in the market in terms of like, I mean, the specul speculation and the speculator boom, right? But um, for the most part, I think like the guys that are still with Image, because I believe that's after Rob leaves, right? At, before the five-year mark when he does like the heroes. Yeah, I couldn't, gym. Uh, I couldn't tell you what year uh, that happened. I mean, he was he was kicked out. He didn't he didn't leave voluntarily. I was okay. I was trying to say, I was trying to say it in a different way, but yeah. I mean, I mean, we're we we've all made up and we're all friends and whatever after the fact. But at the time, it was like, okay, this is this isn't going so well. And yeah, it was not a not a good scene at the time. I, I, know, it, it all started so well. Yeah, I mean, I, it, and I think that you know, it's just watching the images history and this is why like i kind of wanted to cover like the breadth of your your career with image um is because there's so many different interesting like points in time right like during you know you guys kick rob out jim leaves to sell mm. to to dc how do you guys how do you guys come to stick together weather through this storm and speak i mean you guys are in my eyes sometimes like you can argue who's the second best publisher or, or second biggest publisher. I think you guys almost superseded DC a few times in, in, in your heyday, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't, you, even, I don't even know what it is right now, but. How do you guys weather the right. storm? How do you guys weather that storm to, towards the end of the nineties leading into the early two thousands? We just keep looking for other stuff, you know? I mean, the, one of the complaints of Image Comics really early on was it's like, oh, there's a new publisher and they're just doing superheroes? What the hell? I mean, now's the time to expand the market and do all this other stuff. And, and uh, you know, but that was just the stuff that we, that interested us and the stuff that, that we wanted to do personally. Because was like, I love superheroes. I want to do nothing but superheroes. That's kind of kind of what we're all about, or what I was all about, was doing that. And um, so... You know, but but once we got to the next generation of creators, the next bunch of people, they had outside interests and they weren't necessarily sitting here going, I want to do a book where I can cross over with Spawn and Savage Dragon. They were sitting there going, I want to tell my my different story with my different thing. You know, if I want to do fishing comics, I can, I can do that. If I want to do... Uh, you know, whatever. And, and people had all sorts of crazy things that they wanted to do. And because of the nature of, of the company, that was kind of the idea is, yeah, do whatever the hell you want to do. I don't care. Mm -hmm. So they did whatever they wanted to do. That worked out all right. And in the beginning, like when you guys were bringing in, the, besides the Image 7, you know, like when you guys start bringing in like a Sam Keith, a Del Keown, like how does that how do you guys decide? Is it like a like you guys decide together whether like uh, yeah 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 we would vote on stuff we we would people would say I'm thinking about asking this guy and and we would we would get together virtually to to some degree we talk to each other on the phone or fax back and forth or back back in the day yeah fax <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that you know but there was still calling in meetings where people would all call in and be part of some party line thing or and then we would get together and and vote on stuff every every few months or something we weren't anywhere near each other for the most part so it wasn't like we were we were all hanging out in the same studio or anything right do you guys still vote on stuff or is that uh, no, not, not, so not as much now that now we've we've kind of put this this system in place where we have a publisher who's overseeing the whole thing and occasionally he'll float things by us if he if it's totally out of the left field mm -hmm. but for the most part they just do what they do and, and we tr we trust them to, to to do their job and then in terms of like other Besides Savage Dragon, you've done a few interesting projects that um, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about the last time, like the 24-hour comic that you did that you published, um, yeah. also the uh, Next Issue project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd really love to kind of like ask you, <laughs> what were the, what was the impetus behind doing those type of projects and not necessarily something 
more, um, you know, like dragon related? Uh, just my whim is follow me wherever I, I go. As part of <laughs> I mean, part, part of it is, I mean, it's, it's while it's cool to, to create your own characters and do whatever you want, um, that, that is awesome and you can do anything. But there's something about uh, playing with other people's toys. It's kind of fun too. And um, what, what ends up happening when you're using other characters is they come at things with a different sensibility than you do necessarily. You know, it's like, oh, I would never think of doing a character like that. So this is this is out of left field. This is a different thing. Let me see what this is all about. Let me explore what this kind of character is, is like. And it's just, it's, it's kind of your, your uh, what's, what's a good term? <laughs> Exercising different muscles or, or, or whatever. It gives you an opportunity to just go, oh, okay. Let me see what that's like. And, you know, it's the same thing with when you're working with, with other companies. You know, if suddenly I'm like, hey, you had a, you're doing Ghost Rider. It's like, well, crap, I've never drawn motorcycles before. Now I have to. And I would never think, oh, I really need to draw motorcycles on my own. But if suddenly that was my assignment, it's like, oh, I guess I really better learn how to do this. Um, and and uh, and I just, you know, I'm into old comics. My I grew up with my dad's comic book collection. He 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 bought comics when he was a kid, so we grew up with his comics from the '40s and '50s. And just the idea that. Hey, you can do stories with some of these characters that you read when you were a kid. Uh, it's like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Let me try that out. See what that's all about. That'll be fun. And sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. <laughs> and there's also, you know, sales come into play where you go, oh, that was a super expensive kind of book to put together, format wise and printing wise and everything. It's like, oh, nobody made any money doing this. <laughs> okay, now people don't want to play anymore. What the hell? Um, so ultimately, that's what happened with the, the next issue project. It was like, oh, these just aren't successful enough to be able to continue. Are there any other uh, interesting type of projects that you've kind of thought about wanting to do that are not Dragon related, something akin to the next issue project or something different, different formats? Um, I mean, I I'll come up with different characters and I've, I've done a few things. I did, uh, we did a book called uh, Giant Size Kung Fu Bible Stories where I did a character and now called Jack Champion. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, it was just, the idea was it was supposed to be something and I was supposed to do something with it and then I didn't didn't get too far with that. I drew, drew one story and wrote one story. But it's like, ah, oh, I should have done more of that. That, that would have been fun. Everything takes up so much time. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, can't do everything. You know, you want to. You want to be able to just, I want to write a million comics and draw a million comics. This would be great. And then, you know, the physical reality of, oh, this, this takes a certain amount of time to be able to do this sort of thing. And guess what? You can't do that. Oh, <laughs> I want to, I want to. <laughs> but so in, in like Savage Dragon, like I think like image, <laughs> they would always talk about like the release schedule, right? Like it, stuff would not always come out on a monthly basis, but I do want to commend you like over the past, I would say, I don't know, I think of the pandemic, right? Once you guys were allowed to start publishing comic books again and, and Diamond, uh, was off of their whatever they freeze yeah. that they did for like two months Sa i think that's the most savage dragon had come out on a regular yeah. basis in, yeah, in quite a while up pretty regular and then yeah. and then more recently i hit it i hit a block and it all slowed up again it's like god damn it this is no good that's the most frustrating thing is is occasionally you run into things where uh you just can't produce the volume that you would like to be able to produce and and more than anything, it's not it's just this this indecision of I've got a million options and I don't can't choose which of these million options I want to do. There are times where I'll sit there and go, oh, I've drawn that same page four times. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, that's no good. You've done a lot of work, but it's all the same page. That's that's no good. 
uh, pare it down here, buddy. So. And I, I have to say, like, I mean, I think when we talked last 250, I think had just come out or was about to come out. So we didn't see the, we didn't see the, we didn't get to talk about the return of Paul Dragon. And I, I mean, I absolutely love it. I think that was really cool too. You did the facsimiles of you know, the graphic fantasy one and two. So people could kind of get a little bit of a primer on that stuff as well. Um, how fun has it been revisiting the original, the original Dragon? Somewhat fun, but kind of confusing because I, I, I don't really know how much of his, I mean, I'm, I'm got an issue coming up where I kind of put some markers in of where his history was, but you know the reality is his history stopped in 1982. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so there really wasn't there wasn't a lot of progression then. And then, you know, the modern image stuff kicked in in 1992, and then I'm telling completely different stories there for the most part. And so now I'm just trying to go, well, okay, well, how did his, how did things work out in his world as opposed to ours? And it's like, whew, what can I, what can I really use from my old comics, my old thoughts and my old whatever, I've kind of put little bits and pieces out there. And now it's like, all right, make sense of this madness. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like the dynamic between him and, and and Malcolm. I think it's an interesting dynamic to kind of play off of because it's kind of his dad, but it's not his dad, you know. Yeah, it's, a, it's it. a weird, weird thing because it's like it's just like an alternate reality version of somebody, and it's like, well, they don't have the they don't have the love for you that that you would like them to have, and you don't have the love for them that you would like them to have, but they look just like your your dad it's like mm -hmm. oh, what the hell man that's not cool so it's a strange relationship and yeah. you know and his his kids are just like oh grandpa this is awesome <laughs> like uh oh, you guys should start getting it <laughs> i don't know this guy at all so i know we have an issue out as of as of the day we're recording a new issue comes out tomorrow right um but uh -huh. i have <laughs> well, it, it does. Um, it I, does. Okay, yeah, it cool. Does. <laughs> I, I haven't seen a printed copy yet, so. Um, but I do know that I've looked in the past few previews catalogs, and I haven't, I haven't seen an issue of SD solicited. Yet. Yeah, I've been running really far behind, so we're, we've kind of just taken the issues that have been solicited already, and just been like, it's just keep telling retailers if this is coming, this is coming, this is coming. But I mean, I guess I could re-solicit ones that have already been solicited, but it's just kind of, are, am I going to get back into the swing of things or is this, or is this permanent? I mean, at this point, I've got three issues that have been solicited that uh, uh, I haven't drawn yet on both. I'm not sure about it yet because I get ant too. It's like. Yeah. What a time to be having this, this block. Just awesome. But the idea is, the idea is I'm going to get my act together and I'll, and I'll get back into the swing of things and be able to produce on a regular clip and, and all this madness goes away. Because it's very frustrating. It can be very frustrating. Yeah, how do you, when, when something like that does take place, when you just have that block, what is I've it? Ne I've never dealt with it before. Never this dealt with first, it. This is the first time in, okay. in four, 40 years that I've had Jeez. to suddenly confront this or just like, holy crap, what do I do here? This is no fun at all. Since you are within that block, what what is what are some of the things that you kind of do to try to like get out of it, for lack of a better way of saying it? Is it just, just you, you just take time away? You always do. I don't take time away. I just sit at the drawing board and not draw. Or is hmm. You know, or just go, well, I, this, this, uh, I still need to do the letters pages. So I've got a couple letters here. I'll, I'll answer those super thoroughly, yeah. <laughs> you know, or do whatever other little thing needs to get done. Cause there's always crap that needs to get done. Right. Oh, there's correspondence. You could be doing correspondence. Oh, time to do some more podcasts. Let's, let's get that going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Uh, and then you've also, well, let's, let's talk Ant. I mean, you, like you, you, you kind of mentioned it. You took on mm-hmm. Ant, you bought the character from Mario mm-hmm. Gully a few years ago um, yeah. and you relaunched it, which yeah. was awesome. I, I loved it. I love that you're coloring it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it, it's a different, it's almost a different style of your art. than we Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the idea. Is, is I wanted it to really feel different. And mm-hmm. so uh, it's like, okay, how do I, I got to find a way of drawing this that visually it's going to look different. And then, uh, you know, by coloring it myself, I kept trying to tell people, I want the coloring to be like this. And um, the, the couple of people I talked to didn't quite pull it off. So I was like, all right, I'm going to just show you what I had in mind. And then I did one, and then I was like, oh, I kind of like, I like coloring, it's fun. <laughs> and it's kind of kind of mindless and then kind of not, because it's like, oh, I'm just dropping in flat colors here and then coming in doing some highlights and having some fun with it. But I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So it's so, so much experimenting. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, it's always awesome getting another dose of some Eric Larson art. You know, I mean, I he, like Savage Dragon was my entry point into Image Comic Books, and it's always been my favorite title of like oh, cool. the initial ones. You know, and to see you launch another one was really cool. And yeah, it's been fun and it's been weird because I'm trying to. And it was a weird comic in that it was all over the place. It'd be like, here's a flash forward, and here's a flash backwards, and here's when she's a little girl, and here's a bunch of stuff that's in her head, but it didn't really happen. It, I thought it was kind of a, a kind of messy. And there was five different writers who were taking a, a whack at it. And they were all over the place. And each one of them was kind of putting, putting a lie to what's come before. So I thought I'd be the sixth guy who could come along and put a lie to what's been done before. <laughs> and basically, I'm like, I'm just going to start at the beginning rather than have there be flash forwards and backwards and stuff like that. Just to start at the start and go on from there and put that kind of thing in motion and hopefully make sense of this whole nonsense. And what are your, uh, what are the long-term plans uh, in terms of Ant? Like, do you have like a set amount of issues you'd like to do or just uh, as long as you have ideas, you'll- Yeah, as long them? as I have ideas, I want to just kind of keep, keep trucking with it. I don't know that it's going to be, you know, it's just going to depend on how well I can get Dragon back on track too, as mm-hmm. to how, you know, is is Ant going to also be monthly forever? I don't know. Okay. You know, maybe that Dragon will be close to monthly and Ant will be six times a year. I'll, I'll do the best I can. Okay. <laughs> And and going and going back to like image as a whole, like I mean, I I don't want to like gloss over your time as publisher, which I think was super important. Uh, but we did talk about it prior uh, on our prior interview. But I, I I'll ask again, you know, in case somebody hasn't seen that or, or listened to it, isn't really quite sure. Um, you spent you spent a good amount of time, for, I think, for four years, about four years as mm-hmm. publisher of Image, and you were responsible for bringing in a lot of talent, a lot of different titles. What what are some of your fondest um, memories of like flexing those type of muscles as opposed to you know your artistic side i don't know <laughs> Jeez, i don't have a good answer for that question uh i mean part of it was we had a bunch of books that we had been doing that weren't necessarily successful some of them were having some some problems and i think some of us like you, you know it would have been nice if somebody had said your logo is unreadable or, you know, this character design isn't very strong or these covers aren't very, uh, aren't, aren't composed very well. And so I kind of initially was coming at it from something of an art director perspective of just going, let's get this stuff to be a little more commercially sound in, in, in that regard. Um, and that was that was kind of a thing early on. And I would do, you know, other people would I would do character sketches for other people's books. I'm like, here, let me help you out. Why don't you try something like this? How about this as a splash page? How about something like this as a logo? You know, the the Luna Brothers had pitched a book called Heroin. And it was like, 
yeah, that's not the best choice of, of words for the, the heroine of your book. Why don't, why don't you call it something else? Yes. And so, you know, eventually now I'm totally blanking. What was that? What was that book that they, they did? I'm trying to think of it. I, I can't think of it either. I'm drawing a blank. Totally I, know talk, I know what you're talking. I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, God, and, and the audience is screaming, what? <laughs> I can but see. it's, you know, a lot of those things came down to like, let's, let's get logos that are readable. Let's do this. Let's do that. And then once, once a lot of that stuff was going, then it's like, let's, let's bring in some more people. And, you know, I was reaching out to different creators and trying to get them to come on board and, and stuff like that. And so it was, it was kind of a, kind of a fun thing. Plus I was going to work, which was unusual for me. You know, I'd been working at home and my social skills had atrophied to the point where it was nothing but unintelligible grunts. And it was like, oh, now I get to deal with human beings. <laughs> my God, this is a whole different dynamic, you know, and having to deal with office politics and people, this, this and that, you know, so you try to get a, a good group together and put out some some good books and stuff like that but it was it was a lot more dealing with emails and correspondence and a lot less of the creative end of things and i just sort of like once the once it was the, the ship was sailing in a good direction and waters weren't looking so choppy it was like let's just turn this over to eric stevenson and let me get back to creating comics because that's really what I got in here to do rather than being an administrator. Right. It was kind of fun just to be able to, to talk to folks all the time and be, uh, you know, chewing the fat about different books and what people wanted to do. But really, I, I, I wanted to do my book. So, you know, can I go back to doing that, please? Yeah. Appreciate and so post post uh you know like you leave the as as publisher and you you know like they're over the next few years you're not only working on dragon you do the supreme revival right mm -hmm. um you work on spawn as well yeah. working on you know characters that essentially you know like other image partners characters that they created and how do you get to flex you know like some of the other kind of like um I don't know. How do you like jump in? Because your style and, and and so each I think each house right <laughs> and image kind of had their own style. You, you mentioned like Wildstorm had like a certain feel, yeah, Extreme yeah, yeah. had a certain feel. So now you're working with their their type of characters that have like a, kind of a distinct style. How do you kind of like bring your own ideas and energy into it in a fun way? Well, I just do whatever the hell I want to do. Basically, <laughs> I mean, I, with with uh, Supreme, I I gave him a, I gave Rob, a, you know, it's like, oh, well, if, I, if, it was, if it was my book, I would have done blah, 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 blah. And then it's like, oh, you got to do that. I'm like, oh, crap. Okay. So that was really initially an idea of how this character could be and, and a way of, of putting this book together. I don't, I wasn't thinking of that as a, as a long-term, I want to do this book forever. It was mostly just a situation of here's what I think you could do with the book. Let me set this up for the next guy. Here, take it, mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, with Spawn, I don't remember even how that came about. I think Todd was just looking for a for a warm body. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to do this book. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, is, he he needed somebody to, to help him out for some story, I think. I think he just needed somebody to patch in for that that uh, that storyline in hell. And he just needed somebody who could do that relatively quickly. And I was like, all right, I can I can do that. I, I had done a fill-in for him earlier, uh, issue 199. He just, again, needed a person to do some work so it's like all right I can do that and then this came about it was like oh I like this let's keep this going and then it was like oh but but, but you're 
this is super frustrating to work with you on this. This is no fun at all. I mean, because I have my own sensibility yeah. and my own everything. Once you, once you got two famous chefs in one, one room, it's like, this isn't going to work out so well, especially when they're both trying to cook the same dish. I don't think it was great for either of us, honestly. You know, maybe, maybe I, I, I'm told people enjoyed those comics. So I love them, yeah. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. But, uh, but I know for me, it was just super frustrating to go, but I wrote this and then you changed it. You're not a better writer than I am, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was, it was kind of frustrating. So then, you know, whenever I go and do something with anybody else, it, it just becomes like, oh, but now, now you see why you don't do this? Now, do you get it now, you idiot? Why do you keep trying this? Every time you go and, and, and Lucy pulls the football away from you and every time you fall on your ass, what are you doing? Uh, yes, that's true. I just need to do my own stuff and not have somebody above me saying no 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 can't do that yeah i mean i i mean i personally like i i love that i love that spot run because i'm a huge fan of yours uh but definitely like i i would always prefer more dragon comics than doing <laughs> the other stuff it's always nice seeing yeah, other yeah, stuff yeah. but i do i do love um more dragon um yeah you talk about yeah, more, i get that <laughs> you talk about too many chefs in the kitchen what about image united and oh, yeah, yeah, how that fun how that didn't finish i mean what's yeah, the likelihood that anybody even uh, uh completes that uh i would say zero okay i'm gonna go with zero i'm gonna and that may be rounding up <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's the the problem was that rob uh rob ended up getting his characters when times were tough, I think Rob sold pieces of some of his characters, and then his the pie got divvied up. And so at this point, he doesn't own Supreme and he doesn't own Youngblood. Somebody else does, and that person is uh, nobody wants to deal with him, you know. And Rob doesn't want to deal with you know. And it, it would just be a mess to swap out all those characters, and then. Uh, it's like I, I penciled the other two, two of the other issues. The sixth issue, there was never any, uh, uh, I never got the plot for the sixth issue. So I don't know how Robert was going to wrap the whole thing up. I have no idea. But uh, I know issues four and five, there are pages that are done that are just sitting there. I've got, you know, because there's some pages that are just me. So it's like, you're, you're, this page is done. It's got, you know, Angel when she's still like 12 years old or something. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, holy crap, is this stuff ever going to see print? There's this page with uh, Dragon being attacked by Violator. Is that ever going to see print? It's like, I don't know. It's got Todd McFarlane art on it and my art on it, but there's really no place where this could see print. So, Damn. how weird. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I'd love to see that stuff. So. Uh, I would too. Or, you know, or, or just, you know, let's just do a collection of, you know, here's the first three issues. They're done. Here's the the pages that are it, issue four and the pages that are issue five in the current state that they're in. And then here's, you know, write up the plot for the sixth issue so we can at least see how it ends and run it as a, well, this is how much we this is how much we did i mean that would sir i mean i would you know sure it's a lot something of people at it. least yeah you know it's not going to give you the, clo the the closure that you would like but it's like it's something you know i would like to see that with like 1963 you know alan moore saying it's like here's the six issues that were realized and here's the here's the script for the annual or the plot, the annual, whatever that was, that was supposed to wrap this whole thing up. Here's that. You can read it if you want. You know, I, I don't mind those those kind of unfinished symphonies, but I'd like to at least see some of this stuff. You know, there's there's so much unpublished work. 
Yeah, I agree. Frustrating. And so, I mean, you, you mentioned, it's funny that you mentioned the 1963 uh, annual because I'm not sure if you're aware of the group of fans that put together uh, Image Grand Design. It was a fan book. Yeah. Are you aware of that book? I'm not. And they basically made a cohesive like image timeline almost of, of the all the characters that ever were created. And there's also that same group uh, is getting together to publish a fan uh, 1963 annual. Okay. Which is pretty cool. Uh, I, I think do, do they have Alan's script to go not, on? I think that I, I don't think they're going off of Alan's script. I know that there's certain characters they're not using. I think only Stephen Bissett um, gave, uh, we, they licensed some of his creations with Alan um, that they're going to use. But I know that they're doing a fanzine based on the, that universe of characters. So I don't know. I think I just you mentioned it, so I just thought it'd be yeah, cool to kind of yeah. tell you about. I had actually called up Alan when I became publisher, and I says, "Hey, can we wrap, can we wrap this thing up?" What do you say? Tell you what, let me draw the damn thing. And uh, yeah, that didn't happen. And Alan was like, "No, it's not going to happen." <laughs> yeah, basically, sure. he he had a falling out with with one of the guys, and he was just like, "Oh, you you." You think I'm being Stanley and taking all the credit and all the whatever? Here, you can have all the characters. I don't give a shit. I wash my hands and take it. Goodbye. And then they never did anything with any of it. So it's so it just remains this abandoned property. And that's I mean, that's that's one of the frustrations of, of creator own stuff too. Is that that you know when there's these people having this falling out. That these things just stop and they yeah. just don't you know continue in any form anymore that's just it's it's over it's done and there's not going to be any more yeah it's it's so, definitely disappointing for sure yeah you know it's like oh young blood is essentially dead at this point uh supreme is essentially dead there's all these other characters that unless the creators actually get off their ass and produce something you're never going to see any more of, you know? Will there ever be any more pit? Who the hell knows? Yeah. You know? And I, there's all these characters that continuity owns or all these characters all over the place that various people own. You know, not to, not to heap praise on Marvel or DC, but at least they use some of their stuff. That's you true. <laughs> it's like Spider-Man is never going to die because yeah. there's always going to be somebody there who's like... Oh, I grew up with Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man. I would love nothing more. But my my dream is to do Spider-Man. It's like, all right, you are you are our dream guy. Um, so uh, again, uh, another Savage Dragon question. You released one of my favorite single issues. I think it came out in I think it was 2020, not 2021, but it was the one where you homage the different newspaper strip yeah. funny. Lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how how fun and how um, at times frustrating was it for you um, to produce that comic and to emulate all those different styles? Um, it was kind of fun. Uh, it was super challenging because I wanted I wanted them to read like they were both Savage Dragon and those strips. So I wanted the kind of the sensibility of those strips, which meant reading an awful lot of those various strips. In some cases, I'm flat out swiping from other artists too, where I'm just like, I can't, I can't do this on my own. I need to, I need to rip off Charles Schultz. <laughs> so there's some pretty, pretty hard, hard bites in there of various creators. Kind of a mess. <laughs> I mean, I think it was an awesome issue. And I it think was, it was cool. And uh, the Theron Delgado, who's lettering it emulated all the different lettering styles of all the different strips and and he did an outstanding job and and i you know in terms of imitating the coloring of this various strips that was that was fun too i actually was involved in a lot more of the coloring than i uh than i was credited with so i was coming after the fact of going all right let's make this look like newsprint and change some of these colors around and 
So and you, that was, you did that with the second print too, right? Like the first print was yeah, colored yeah. one way. There, the there's second. there's like three printings in each each one. The coloring looks different. <laughs> it was the first time I picked too tight of a uh, not to get all technical here, but um, but the, when you print comics, the um, everything is turned into dots, and they're really small these days. But everything is turned into into small little dots and so if when i'm emulating old strips you want it you want there to be a dot pattern on there right but the problem was i picked a really small tight uh dot screen and then when the printer turns that into dots what ended up happening there's there would be these moray effects where you can look at the some of the colors and what will happen will be a concentrated group of dots here and then an unconcentrated group over there as these two different uh, uh, dot pattern screens are laid on top of each other. It just becomes this, this thing where colors will be fading in and out and it looks terrible. <laughs> and in the first printing it was like, well, that's what we got. That's what it looked like. So in the second printing, it's like, well, let's just get rid of that line, that, that dot screen altogether and just print it as, as clean and clear and as it can be. And then, and then it was like, oh, some of these colors look kind of garish because they're printed on stark white paper and blah, blah, blah. So then the third time around was like, all right, let's do the dot screen again, but not quite as tight, not quite as small as the initial dot screen. And maybe there won't be this more effect. And the third time, that actually, that's the good one. That one looks pretty good. And it, and it emulates the old strips and whatever. The, the dots aren't, aren't quite as small as they would have been in an actual newspaper. Mm -hmm. But uh, whatever, you know, there's only so much I can do. Yeah, I mean, I think that's awesome how much, you, how much work you put into <laughs> a single issue. You know, oh, it's, it would, to, the, the thing was, I was gaining time on the book. I was, I had some momentum and I was gaining time and I was getting ahead and ahead and ahead. And I was finally like, oh, this is great. I've actually got a, uh, I'm building up some backlog. I'm, I'm turning around issues in about three weeks. This is excellent. I, so the idea of doing AMP was like, oh, this makes a lot of sense. I can get, I can get ahead enough on Dragon and then I can, Put ant and, and do ant as a different simpler style and and i could i could do both this will be excellent and then i did this comic strip issue and just everything ground to a halt it's like oh crap this is this issue's taking forever uh and i haven't quite got the the totally into the swing that i had been in prior to that so it's getting better so i'm, I'm feeling feeling all right about it going forward all right well that's i mean that's good to hear because like i said uh, more dragon comics uh, yeah. is is what we're all dying for you yeah. know yeah, yeah, yeah. um guess, so uh, i you know i'm kind of <laughs> curious you know like I, I like listening to you know cartoonists that you still talk process and stuff which leads me into the question of will we or have you ever thought of doing an artist edition um with some of your art whether it's just savage dragon whether it's a mix of some of your your marvel or dc work um have you thought about doing that is there a chance that we'll see one of those well i can't use marvel or dc work that's that's off the table those those that's not accessible to me okay plus um uh my house burned down in 1991 so any of the art that I would have had, any of the physical artwork I would have had on hand was destroyed. So they can't really do an artist edition of, of they're just, the, the pages don't exist for a lot of that stuff. They could do a, one of the, the Revenge of the Sinister Six if they could round up all those pieces, but they're totally scattered to the wind as far as I know. Okay. Um, but like the, the issue I did with the, the beast in it that predated that, all but one page is destroyed. Because it's oh. like, they're just, 
it's just all gone. So yeah. you can't do an artist edition when you don't have any of the art. In terms of, I'll probably do something like that with Savage Dragon at some point. It's just, I've got so much of this art. I kind of tempted to do one of, because uh, I've been drawing it really big lately. <laughs> so I kind of been like, oh, we should do like the biggest artist edition you can imagine where it's just super huge because those like double page spreads are just like barn door size. Um, so that, that would be pretty cool. The problem with those is there's no, there's no lettering on them. So you can't, you can't use them as like, I'm going to read this great big story. It's just, oh, okay. Art, 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 you know, which is mm -hmm. fine. But, you know, I, I kind of like the artwork back when there was lettering on the boards. But, you know, I've got 186 issues where it is on the board. So that, that should be enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I I know that there's definitely a market for it. I know that my me myself. I know there's you know the whole Savage Dragon group on Facebook. I know. I think I asked that question a couple of years ago. Of like anybody we doubt is like comments just like flooded down below. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So and I've um, got I've got so much of the artwork I still own. So I haven't sold. Yeah, way way more than. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's like yeah, pan the pan pan pan. God, that's awesome. That's that's all Savage Dragon artwork, right? Right over there. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and the, yeah. the bigger stuff is, is on the top. And then the, the real big stuff, the double page spreads, I had to, those are in a portfolio somewhere because they're just too damn big. <laughs> all right, well, let's get that artist edition out. Let's, <laughs> let's get let's, that. Let's, let's get that going. No, it's just finding the time, getting a decent scanner. My scanner is just the worst. And just have this crappy scanner because it's like I just need to, to be able to have black and white stuff. So mm -hmm. everything, it's the simplest stuff to scan. So I, I've just got the a cheap shit uh, scanner. I was like, oh, I would need to get a decent scanner, a decent size scanner, and then have somebody go through and make copies of all this stuff. I'd rather draw that another comic. I get, I get you. I get you. Um, <laughs> it's the problem with all this stuff is, is when it comes down to it, I, I, I just want to make more comics. I don't want to do any of this stuff. It's that's no fun. I don't want to talk on the phone. I don't want to do any of this nonsense. You know, people contact me about, oh, we should do Savage Dragon movie or Savage Dragon this or Savage. It's like, ah, oh, that seems like a headache. <laughs> Yeah. So no no desire besides the cartoon. I'd like to, I, I in a, in a way I kind of like to see it, but in another way I really wouldn't, because then it's like, oh, am I going to be hearing that voice all the time? Like that's not what he sounds like. That's not what he looks like. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, in some ways, it's like there's an audience there that would like it, but uh, I think if there is a I think if there was ever a Savage Dragon movie, it might be a movie that I would never see, which would be weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, they made a, it's like, you know, it's like they made those, those Savage Dragon cartoons and it's like, I don't, I don't revisit those. I don't watch them again and again. At the time I was semi-involved making them, you know, as a mm -hmm. creative consultant of some sort, but, you know, a script would come through and I read the first script and made a couple changes and added a couple lines and the second script came through as, and the revision of script one. And then, you know, everybody would incorporate notes from the first one, but then you'd be like, oh, now you got to see what, how it's changed with everybody's notes in, in version two. And pretty soon you're just like, I'm getting like, six seven eight scripts a week this is ridiculous wow. i can't read all this stuff when it's I, I'm, and it's you know the third version of this and the second version of this and the first version of that and you know at a certain point i was like all right i'm not even reading this anymore i got a pack of comics to make and there are episodes of the show that i was like ah, fast forward <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I haven't seen them all. Okay. 
Well, um, before we before we head out, I were leading to the 30th anniversary. Um, a huge milestone, huge uh-huh. milestone. You know, um, you guys have done stuff for each of the other anniversaries. Is there any plans uh, on your end um, to celebrate? On my that? end, yeah. No, no, I had no, no plans. I had. No, what was I supposed to do? I don't know. I, so. <laughs> I mean, it's like I was going to do more issues of Savage Dragon. You know, it's weird because other people would be like, oh, I want to come back and revisit my character. And it's like, yeah, I never stop. I'm just still doing that. I mean, our, when we first did that, the 10th anniversary thing, it was, oh, and this would be cool. Everybody's going to come back and do their own character. It's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm already doing that. So that's what I ended up doing Dragon's Origin because it's like, what else am I going to do if I'm going to introduce a character and then you guys aren't going to get your acts together? And so th- three years later, my, the character that I want to introduce will be introduced. That's no good. The only thing I could do is a story set in the past. All right. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I just thought I'd, you I don't know. I, I, I think about it and, it and definitely, you know, now that I've got these little 30th anniversary banners on there, but but it's like, I don't even know what to do. I don't have a, uh, I don't, you know, it's, it doesn't happen to be a year where, where one of those anniversary issues is rolling around. Right. So, I mean, I could do one would just be, hey, this is a special. First issue came out in July, July rolls around. It'll be like, hey, 30th anniversary issue, double size, triple size, whatever. I guess I could do that. I should do that. You should do that. Yeah. I think you should. I think. You should. Oh, no. I mean, I also thought, you know, like, it'd be kind of cool. Like, you could always do um, uh, a facsimile, even, of the first of the first debut issue. That would be something yeah. you could do. Yeah, I mean, that's a little... I mean, you know, that those, that those color files don't... Agree. So, in terms of having it be, like, a real facsimile, in terms of coloring look like this and the, you could recolor it too that that'd be kind of cool a recolored <laughs> version of the first this is this is the way i would have colored it myself <laughs> i'm gonna do i'll color it and yeah. <laughs> then i'll show you you'll you'll all see how yeah <laughs> uh, all right I well know, man. i mean I, I i like i like the idea of, of doing but it's always like okay well what's your idea going to be like, oh, I could, re- I could introduce some new characters. Like, yeah, you do that every month. Ah. That's true. <laughs> you yeah, can I kill get... off an important character. Yeah, but I do that all the time, too. <laughs> it's like, I, I kind of write and draw the book like it's going to end any issue anytime. So it's always like, and then this big life-changing thing happens. And then this huge thing happens. Like, characters are getting married and characters are dying without notice, you know? <laughs> all right well maybe that triple size issue maybe we get right. that triple size all issue right. in july yeah. just that just seems like work i gotta corral a bunch of buddies and... <laughs> or double size. you can do double size double size yeah. double yeah. size yeah. works too right um sure. <laughs> but yeah anyways you know um i'm super excited for more dragon i can't wait uh to read the new issue that's coming out um excited to see what else you know you got planned for the future and I want to see that artist edition as well, please. All right. Okay. Um, so thank you. Uh, thank you so much for, for taking time to chat sure. with me. Huge fan of yours. And um, for everybody listening and watching, uh, if you want to just share where they can find you, follow you online, and I'll drop those links down below for you. All right. <laughs> where am I at? I mean, I'm, savagedragon.com is where the... Where, where my comic is, that's the site for that. And it's got all, all sorts of stuff. The thing I use the most is the, the wiki that's part of it, which okay. is all about, hey, here's every character and all their birth dates and where they're from and all sorts of information that I can use, mostly as a keeping track of all this nonsense stuff. Because it's, it's at this point, I've got like, you know, 100 characters 200 characters something ridiculous so it gets unwieldy at times right? like who's alive who's dead a bunch of guys are showing up who are they? Like, yeah. oh, damn i need to think this stuff through um 
And then I'm on Facebook and Twitter or whatever. What am I, Eric J. Larson on Twitter? Something. Just spell it right. <laughs> you can figure that out. All right, cool. Well, I'll drop those links down below. All and, right. uh, Eric, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Um, and I can't wait to do this with you again in the future, man. All right. Sounds good.